You like it? That's a creek that's got a lot of water in it. Hello my friends, welcome to another episode of Vlog With Me. I'm super excited because in this episode we are actually traveling again. We are in Montrose, Colorado, just exploring the wilderness, which is my favorite thing to do, and the mountains are such a wonderful break from the scenery in Florida. So we are going to be exploring the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. And if you're new to the Vlog With Me series, or if you're new to this channel, I will let you know that normally on this channel, my mission is to help you level up your video production skills and become a better vlogger or travel vlogger. And I do that a lot by talking about gear and technique and things like that, but there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes in putting a vlog together. So the Vlog With Me series is all about you just being on my side of the thought process, because I'm gonna share just the little things that come up, the struggles, um, the things that you need to think about before you go vlogging, or just like the thought process of how you put together a story. Because uh, there's a, just a lot of different ways to do it. Like right now, for example, this shot is a little problematic. Every shot's problematic for some reason. I've got this rushing creek right beside me. And it's pretty loud, pretty loud like ambient noise. So I'm using the Rode Wireless Go and I'm hoping that if I talk loudly enough, it's gonna drown that out a little bit. And then I've also got the Loom Cube Panel Mini, just giving me a pop of highlight on my face because I'm in this little corner and it was a little bit shady. So I don't know, this just makes everything look prettier. I've got the Sigma 16 millimeter wide angle lens on here. That's got the super large aperture. Right now it's at 3.2. So the background's a little blurry, not too much though. And I do have the Canon M6 Mark II um, on the gimbal, which is the Zhiyun Weevil S not really being a gimbal right now, it's just kind of being a tripod, but I'm gonna be using this one a lot on this trip and talking about this one a lot because I haven't shared a whole lot about it. I'm still getting to know it myself, but I'm excited to use it. So what I need to do now, if I'm gonna go walk over there, is put an ND filter on this lens. And it's not just so I can lower the aperture, it's just so everything could look better. Just that little bit of background blur, it's just gonna make it look a lot better. So, and because it's super bright, it's gonna be the ND32. Welcome to the low light in my cabin. And when I throw this ND filter on, bye. All right, leaving our little cabin, just walking across the way to their RV site. ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. And then sunglasses are like ND filters for your eyes. <laughs> now we'll just pull that off and look. Uh -oh. Hi, family. Hello, fancy camera. Hello. Like a gyroscoper. Mom, a gyroscoper. <laughs> <laughs> you know what she wants now? What does she, she want wants now? To go to a bounce house. The bounce house. Sweetie, we didn't come to Colorado to explore amusement parks. We came to explore nature. Look at the screen. Yeah. Wow, look at this rock wall. That's cool. What do you see? Oh, look there. Where are you going? Do you see the fishies? Right over here. Look. It's floating. So we're checking out this little park in town. Singing truck. There's a singing truck, ice cream truck. Um, so obviously Colorado is very recreational, but they're doing things here that I didn't even know was a sport. Check this out. So that's one of those situations where I've got the 60 mil on for vlogging, but I would have liked to switch to the 30 quickly, but you know, I wasn't going to do all that. It's nice having a zoom lens, but that wouldn't work on a gimbal. It's like you can't have it all. That's one thing you got to learn. This gimbal is so cool. Here, Daddy, hold it. Isn't it cool? It is cool. You can move it all around and it stays steady. Yeah. Ooh. Are you experiencing ducks for the very first time? I'm the mommy. You, can you hold this? Hi friends, welcome to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. It's weird because there's like this haze that is, I don't know, looking through my lens, it just doesn't do it any justice. And I don't know if there's any way to cut through that. It's just that I know in, at like sunset, later in the day, everything would look so much better. But it, it's beautiful to the human eye, but then again, the human eye is much more capable than your camera lens. I'm sure it's gonna look better once it's actually on a big screen. 
but it is gorgeous, that's for sure. Take pictures of me, take pictures of Tammy. I like pictures of you. Take pictures of me. Now, personally, I do love to film and photograph nature, but I most enjoy including a subject within that setting. I think it allows the viewer to feel a greater sense of being in the place by sort of seeing it through another person's eyes. And I never mind being that person on camera if I'm not behind the camera, but doing both can be tricky. Here, just take one step back and then take one step forward with me so there's some motion. Having someone else operate my camera and gimbal can be hit or miss, although the effort is always appreciated. And then there's the subtle art of tricking children into posing for Come photos. Here. We'll get a picture with the phone in it in the background. Yeah, we want to take a picture of your baby deer. Since that's really the most important thing. She's like a little billy goat mountain climber, aren't you? Oh, look at you guys. Say Gunnison. One of these days, I'll have to share all of my tips on this. Wow. Wow. This is a the kind of place where you can get those shots that look dangerous, but they're really not. I don't put myself in dangerous situations uh, for shots. Not anymore. I don't think I ever did, but definitely not now. This looks pretty dangerous. She says she can't vlog with a 30 millimeter. I say it all the time, but I don't know, it kind of works. <laughs> There's a little hole here. Uh, it's always good to utilize foreground to make shots more interesting. <laughs> Framing. Hello again, I am back. It's a new day, it is the next day, and I'm back at the Na Black Canyon of the Gunnison <laughs> National Park. Uh, I keep forgetting that name for some reason. And I am here to just kind of fill in the gaps. Everything I didn't shoot yesterday that I kind of wanted to shoot. It's so great when you're travel vlogging if you can go to a place twice, because the first day you're like, okay, got the lay of the land, kind of figure out, you know, what you want to film and how you want to film it without being overwhelmed with the idea of having to bring all the gear and do it all at the same time. So yesterday, um, also Ella was a little bit like altitude sick. It was weird. She like fell asleep in the car, which I know is normal for kids to do, but she never does that. And that kind of freaked me out. I realized I was like, we live in Florida. She has never been up in mountains and you know, like Denver is one thing, but then this is like, I mean, this is like eight, 8,000 feet, I think. So now that I'm alone, I can really focus more on what I want to film and I have my tripod so I can set up a shot um, and use my Canon Connect app on my phone to film remotely. <laughs> I'll like set it up and then sit on one of these overlooks because I just think it would be so cool to have a shot sitting over an overlook. I know it's kind of cliche but it just looks so cool and I am wearing the same thing that I wore yesterday and there's a reason for that and because this is vlog with me with full disclosure behind the scenes I'll explain that. It's kind of like continuity, but not really. I'm not like trying to pretend it's the same day, obviously, in this vlog. It's really just because I, when I choose what to wear, I, I very carefully choose what to wear when I do these like scenic things because if there's a lot going on in the scenery, you want more of a neutral like palette. So if, if it's a green forest, like I'll usually just wear white or sometimes black. And I knew this was, I, you know, I thought this was gonna be a darker kind of, Black, I mean Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Um, so I thought this was a cool shirt. All right, so I found a good shot. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna sit right there. I'm gonna be so careful. It's not even funny how careful I'm gonna be. Um, I just wanna show you one thing about how I'm always talking about the fully articulating screen on the M50. This is one of the reasons. Because I've got the tripod, it's pointing straight down. But I can see, because I can flip it all the way around and up. So it's not just for vlogging that the fully articulating screen is necessary, it's for photography too. I'll tell you one thing. It sucks. <laughs> that is like, I've got this travel tripod. It's a piece, 
because it's, you know, cheap, it's small, it's a travel tripod, and my nice tripod stays home. So I travel with this, and man, I gotta stop, because, I mean, look at this thing. It's just a piece of crap, but this is my travel one. Which sucks, because when I'm traveling, that's when I'm in these rocky places, and it's tough, and that's when I really need a sturdy tripod. And when I'm home, I probably don't need a sturdy, I mean, I do, it's always good to have a good tripod. But I think it would almost be better to have a cheap tripod at home and then travel with an expensive one. So I'm gonna start looking for like an expensive travel tripod. Lightweight, maybe one of those aluminum ones. They're expensive, I know that, several hundred bucks. <laughs> Every trip always brings up something else that I need. I'm sure that's the case with everyone. Um, and that can be frustrating, but it can also be exciting because there's no better reason to buy something than realizing like a real need for it in the field. You know, that's so much better than just like when someone recommends something or you see something on Amazon or the camera store. Having a need for it's really gonna give you that drive to get it. Okay, so far so fun. I'm just kind of going from overlook to overlook, um, just filming or photographing whatever my heart desires. I've been doing a lot more photography uh, this time around. I just need some content for my Instagram and just don't take pictures of myself very often. And it's good to have pictures with the gear um, because people seem to like you know, seeing me use the gear. And that, I can't always get that stuff because I am the one using the gear, so these pictures are totally fake. <laughs> but still, they're a good way to talk about the gear. And I stopped at this particular overlook, not because it's epic, but because it has picnic tables. And the one really frustrating thing about a gimbal, using a gimbal, is that it's gotta be balanced, obviously. I do my best to balance it before I go anywhere, but it's kinda gotta be like rebalanced. Anyway, long story short, the picnic table is amazing because it's a flat surface, obviously. So I'm gonna go and kind of just like readjust the gimbal and maybe switch out the lens. I think I'm gonna switch to a long lens. I've got my 18 to 135 Canon lens and I'm gonna get some Zoomed in shots of the canyon. Maybe see what's going on in the bottom of the canyon. Oh, that's not a hair in my face, that's a crack in my screen. Lovely. This G7X Mark II is falling apart and I'm like in between whether I buy a new one or I just wait for Canon to freaking come up with a better camera. I've thought about the ZV-1, but I'm just not sold on it. So, I don't know. Again, that's another story for another day. Let's go balance this gimbal. Okay, that was kind of annoying because it's an EF lens, so it's for bigger DSLRs, not for the mirrorless, and it's got the adapter. Uh, the plate, the way it was, it like the lens wouldn't go on, so I had to take the plate off and then put the lens on to put the plate back on. <laughs> I think it's good that some of you understand how big of a pain gimbals really are um, and how much kind of work and attention they require. They look like all fun games, super stable footage, yes. They're worth it, yes, but. They're like, uh, they're like children. They need a lot of attention. And then of course, a tricky thing about balancing a gimbal with a zoom lens is that you don't really know if you're gonna be zooming it. You assume you're gonna be zooming it. All right, going for the grand finale with the 18 to 135 millimeter on the Zoom Weevil S. We're gonna see what it can see down in the canyon and more importantly, how the gimbal handles this lens. Now, you can really only balance a gimbal for one focal length, but because the Weeble S is a strong and powerful gimbal, the motor seemed to handle the changing length of my zoom lens pretty well. Oh my god. And let's talk about long lens videography. These shots are around 50 to 90 millimeters on a Canon crop sensor camera, which is 1.6 times closer than a full frame. Of course, the longer lens is going to get us closer to what we're filming, but it'll also amplify motion in this really floaty, dramatic way. Using a gimbal is imperative to long lens videography because otherwise things would be very shaky. A longer lens will also create compression of the scene, which sort of blows up and blurs the background and or foreground in a very cool looking way. And you can see how awesome this looks because we're dealing with a lot of separation between the foreground and the background. The depth of this canyon is two times the length of the Empire State Building. Fun fact. And I hope these shots at least demo these concepts because I'm not saying that I achieved perfect epic shots. 
I think long lens gimbal videography requires practice and patience and focus, but if that effort is put into it, then some really interesting shots can result, especially in places like this. If you want to learn more about focal length differences and how they create different visual effects in video, then check out this comparison that I did about the Sigma lenses that are made for the Canon M50. <laughs> now this is the part where we film just to remember. And a special little top bunk in our cabin. We got the Loom Cube Panel Mini. As Tracy and me. As our light source. Tracy and the other light. Oh, she's in her little bed. In her little bunk. Do you like this cabin? Yeah. You gonna miss it? Yeah. Do you like Colorado? Yeah. Tomorrow, Colorado. we're gonna drive to Vail and stay in a hotel. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Take a good shower. But right now, let's go to go night night. Say night night. Alrighty, we are saying goodbye to our little cabin. Did you love our cabin? Yeah. You did. Because they've got cute little retro like campers you can stay in. We got the downstairs. We got the upstairs, which she was just loving. I love the top. You love the top. Can I sleep on the top with you? And no, you can sleep on the bottom. <laughs> okay, I'll sleep on the bottom. And uh it was just big enough for us. This is the Cedar Creek RV Park in Montrose, Colorado. And now we're gonna hit the road. So it's suddenly freezing and uh, <laughs> we're getting out of here. All right, <laughs> we're here in Vail. We just drove through the craziest mountains and snow for which we are not prepared. But this is Ella's very first snow. Ella, Help me. you have snowflakes in your hair. Look, oh my gosh. What do you think? <laughs> snowflake. Yes, just like you see on TV. I'm to go in the hotel. Okay, honey. It's too cold. It is cold. See, snow has, has goods and bads with it, doesn't it? Christmas time too. <laughs> it does come at Christmas time, but not in Florida. No. No. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us on this epic adventure. We stayed yeah, last night. I had fun. <laughs> you had fun. I told her I was gonna ask her if, if she had fun. You had fun. Yeah. Good. Well, that's good. That's what I was gonna ask you here in a minute. And I hope you guys learned something about vlogging. Um, maybe picked up some tips for your own vlogs. I don't know, I learned definitely to use a high quality travel tripod because when you travel, that's really when your gear is gonna be the most tested. Um, so I'm gonna invest in that. I broke my um, Freewell ND filter, the circular polarizer ND filter, it was like $100 filter, and that is because I had the camera on a tripod and the whole thing blew over. And I don't know if a better tripod would prevent that. I kind of don't think so because it was like crazy gusts of wind up there um, up there in the Gunnison Canyon. The Black Canyon of the Gunnison. <laughs> the Gunnison is the river and then it's the, the Black Canyon is the canyon of the Gunnison which is the river. Okay, got it. <laughs> now that the vlog is over. Do you want to go see some snow? Yeah. You do want to go see some snow? Okay. We're going to go see some more snow and that'll be all. You guys let me know if you like the vlog with me series. I'll do some more of these in the future. Um, because I love doing them. I think this is really the way that you're gonna learn uh, real life vlogging issues because I could do camera gear reviews and tell you stuff to buy but that's really not gonna help you learn you know the stuff that you would be experiencing in the field especially right now if you're not able to travel uh, due to COVID. Can you say see you next time? See you next time. Yeah. You are so cute in that backpack. Oh my gosh we're in Vail. We quickly, quickly stopped so Ella could see some more awesome snow. What do you think of the snow? Good. <laughs> she says it's too cold. It's really not that cold. Whew, what a good little ending to our trip though.